Let us pray, church, as we are standing. God, we come into your presence. We ask that you may open our hearts and our minds to your word, and that we may be the people you would like us to be. Come, O oh God, in the power of the Holy Spirit, as I share the word. Amen. Amen. Shall we please visit the church? We sent our thoughts on the parable that Jesus uses in Matthew. And he speaks about the word. Hence, in my thinking, I thought this morning to be appropriate to talk about the power of the word of God. The power of the word of God. Jesus is trying to explain the meaning of the parable to the hearers. He makes it clear in his summary that those who believe and trust and uses the word transforms them, changes them into the people of God and the person that God will love them to be. Church, the word of God is powerful. Is powerful in so many words. In the summer of Jesus, he gives the example those who do not take it serious, believe in it, and work on what it says, they will perish. It is powerful not only does it give life, but also it delivers warnings admonitions on things that we do not write in the house of God, on things or the lives that we live which is not in conformity with the word of God. In that sense, it becomes powerful. Secondly, the word of God is a living word. Is that which leads us to be served, to be born again, to be people of God, to be permitted to enter the kingdom of God because it has its great influence on us. Then how does it work? Everybody can claim to be the reader of the Bible, which is the word of God, which is the source of the word. But the question that we might be able to ask ourselves, church, as I read the word, do I take it seriously? Do I understand it? Do I open my heart to it? Do I open my mind to it? Do I really work and act on what the word is saying? In today's world, so many things are happening. People are coming forth to us to tell us all sorts of things. Even things that may lead us astray because they are using the word of God from the source, that is a scripture, that they can justify them and make them true so that you and I can believe and do what they are telling us to do. I'm sure that some of you are great followers of what is happening. It's one thing that I appreciate the social media. It says messages of warning to all of us. If somebody comes and tells you, you have to take jig for you to be saved. Is that normal? Is that normal? Somebody comes and we snake pasta. Is that normal? Is that normal? And these people are using the same word. Also, so weird things are happening. It is the other day I was reading about the trauma situation where this guy, he whips people in church and he sends them out to go and sleep on the streets as the means of driving the devil from their lives. Is that correct, church? Is that correct? So many things are happening. 
using the same word of God. The same word which is so important to you and me. There's a clip that I read. It's real. This was a testimony of a man who had entered into this devilish stuff to grow his church. And he says, I'm warning everybody. He said, if you go to YouTube, you'll find it. He's a South African. He talks about how he went to some country. He got this rubbish. Because they said, if you do this, you'll grow your church. And he says he was told to get a, the head of the pig, go and bury it at the altar. And when it begins to rot, you know the maggots? They begin to multiply. That's how the numbers of the church are going to be. And this man, he religiously followed the instructions. And he, begin, he began to do that in his church. And he confesses, the father was a pastor. And he was a properly trained pastor. And this man, he confesses that when he came back, he did as he was instructed to do. And one of the instructions that he was given was that you should be the last person to enter the church. Every Sunday, go as the last person in the church. And for that, he says, one Sunday, he arrived at this church premises and he saw the multitudes of cars. As soon as he entered the church, people were just jumping, rejoicing, singing, that's what he was told. This would be the sign that what we have told is going to be happening in your church. And that followed Sunday after Sunday. And the church was growing. Every Sunday, numbers were added. And this man, he says, I began to live the life like any other person I was envying. He was so envious of other people who lived posh lives because they were having so much money coming from the Christians by using this means of cheating people. But one day, something backfired. He had a room in his house where the wife never entered. And one day, the wife said, I want to see what goes on in there when you go in there. And he says to her, you cannot come in there. She says, no, I want to see what goes on in there. He tried by all means to convince her not to get in there. But suddenly the word went round. That man is not a man of God. He uses evil means to all people in this church. And in his testimony he says, I'm warning everybody that read the word. Open your heart to the word. God does not cheat. God does not lie. He's always faithful and just. Whatever he promises comes to pass. As long as we open ourselves to that word and we apply ourselves to that word and we do use what the word is saying in our lives. The end result, this man, he says, he went to his father, who was a pastor, and he confessed. He asked for forgiveness. That sorry, dad, I betrayed you. And I want to come back and be restored to the proper word of God. So this is what is happening. People are using the same word, which we are saying it is powerful to their own ends. To their own ends. And this, we are seeing this, even in our families, some of us sitting in here, you leave this church, you go somewhere else where you think a prophet will tell you what's happening in your life. But you are forgetting the word as it is written in there. It is only God and being just and faithful to him that he shall create a, a, a right path for you. Because we want quick fixes. We want things to be done dramatically. We want things to be done the way we want them to be. God does not work that way through his word. God takes us one step at a time. 
And when he's moving with us to give us what we are asking of him in our lives, as he's moving with us one step at a time, he provides teaching as he moves us one from one step at a time to where he wants us to be. So, when we say the word of God is powerful, we mean that the word of God is powerful because it is used as a tool for you and me to be good people as per the intention of God. It is powerful. It is the word through which God reveals himself to you and me. When we read, we pray, we ask him, what are you saying to me in this scripture, in this word? He reveals to us. And when it is truly revealed to us in the real sense of the word of God, we begin to be growing, our minds and our hearts begin to be opening up to this God. I'll give you a very simple example. The creation of the universe, it is understood by us as Christians because the way it is explained in the scriptures, which is God's word. Secondly, the word of God is powerful because it helps us to refute, to bench error. To say, no, that's not the teaching of the word, like the example I've given you. That is the devil's teaching, not the word of God. Even in the growing of the church of God, in the ministry of the church of God, in all that God wants us to do, in all that God sends us to do, if it's true from him, he makes the word and things fall into places. Amen, church. The power of God, when it comes to us and it is properly received, it tends to reproduce itself. How does it reproduce itself in us? When we begin to live according to the word of God, things begin to manifest in our way of our lives. We begin to show forth the fruits that shows that God in the person of Jesus lives in us because of the word. And people begin to see that from us, that really the word has come. Even us as individuals, we begin to see some change, some transformation. I thought I could never do this, but by the grace of God, I'm able to do this. This was far from my thinking. This was far from me, but look where I am. God's word reproduces itself through the manifestation of his fruits in us, church. The true word of God provides the pathways, the directions, the means, and all that is necessary for us to understand this word properly. You don't just run off to some prophet you have heard somewhere there. You don't just run off to some person you have heard they are doing this ABCD. No. The true word of God, it provides direction. It brings to you and me the people who are gifted, who explains what certain scriptures mean to you and me in order to grow in the things of God. And these people when they are sent to you and me are people who are mature, who teach us the true gospel as per the word of God. They are not going to cheat us. They are not going to be sugarcoating it. They will bring it as it is. If it is admonishing you and me, if it is warning you and me, if it is anything that we are doing which is not right with God, they will be able to help us and understand that. Because God has provided the direction, the way where we can hear and listen properly what he wants us to be or to do in his word. The word of God is powerful and important because time and again, we learn new things. There are things that I hear people preach about 
And I say, I've never known the other side of the scripture the way it has been interpreted. And that for me, I learn every day. Or I would read a scripture and I say, I only understand this scripture by doing this and that. By this revelation, it is something that has come as a new thing to me. And it helps me to grow. By so doing, I'm getting revived. I'm getting new creation in me. I'm getting new way of looking at this world. And this world begins to direct me to go in a certain way and a certain direction of my Christian life. The word of God is powerful. If you learn to listen to what it says. The word of God is powerful. If you and I learn to listen to what it says. Normally, when God is sending someone on a mission, Like Jesus, he said to his disciples, go, go, never take a bag or anything. The rest shall be provided for you. I'm sure that my brother priests, whenever a bishop pronounces transfer, they become so worried. At times they don't know what to do. But the only thing that compels us to do what the church wants us to do because of what we put in place. A priest who go to some place grudgingly, not happy, maybe some rural place from the city urban of Lusaka, they will never be comfortable. But if you listen to the word itself, it rewards you and me when we become obedient to the word. Because we trust the word. The one who's speaking to me is God. He's not lying to me. He's telling me the truth. Go, go. I shall do the rest for you. And many testimonies come. Bishop, I thought you were sending me there. I was going to be in trouble. But I'm so happy that things are happening. The word of God rewards. Even you as an individual, as a Christian. If you obey the word and follow what it says, rewards are immense. And they are immense in the sense that we come to acknowledge, to say, it is by God's grace this has happened to me. It's by God's grace things have changed in my life. By God's grace, I have received this. I have been awarded this. Because you have followed what the word is saying to you in your life and in my life. Lastly, church, the word of God, it prepares to be constantly ready for the coming of Christ. It is by the word, when we read it properly, we interpret it properly, we apply what he's saying to our personal lives, that it, we begin to live in constant preparation of meeting our Lord Jesus Christ in his second coming. Meaning, we begin to live for Christ. We begin to live as the word says. And that kind of living continuously manifests itself in our lives. And we become conscious of sin. We become conscious of anything that is not in conformity with God. We become conscious of anything that can distract us from the path of God. Constantly, it gets us ready. It prepares us. By so, I mean that you and I, we should consistently be Christians. Wherever you are, wherever I am, whatever I'm doing, whatever I'm saying, I should be a Christian. I should never say, because I'm in this environment, nobody's seeing me then I can be myself and do what I want. No. Whether in darkness, whether in Indian places, where you are not known, you're supposed to be a Christian. I'm supposed to be a Christian. By so doing, I'm consistently 
being ready for the coming of Christ. That's what the word does. That's what the word is all about. I said to people, my job is a very lonely job. I can't freelance. I can't be found in some places. I can't just be there. I can't be with certain people. I cannot be with certain people. I cannot do what you do. I'm happy to mingle and do anything like anyone does. But because of you, I'm a prisoner. Yes. If I do anything silly, you will judge me harshly. You will forget I'm a human being as you are. Because your expectations are very high of me and my brother Clegy. If we do anything silly, no matter how minute that is, is you still be you know, judging us harshly. Because you say, these are the people of the world. These are the people who should be example to us. Hence, we are prisoners of ourselves. The word, to be effective, it should make you a prisoner. The word, to be effective in me, I should be a prisoner. Because then, I cease to be a freelancing person. Because the word becomes a lantern to my feet. Because the word becomes my guide. Because the word becomes everything in my life. This is what God is saying to you and me. When Jesus talks about how powerful the word is. Let us exemplify that word we read. Let us make sure that the word we read is something that leads us to the kingdom of God.